Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to be building a two-column text layout. We're going to learn the fundamentals of inserting and formatting text, wrapping text, creating columns, and a few more things along the way. Once you complete and master this piece, along with your fundamental illustrator skills, you'll be able to jump into ad and brochure design, web page design, and just so much more. So let's get started. Let's go. Before we get started, I want to let you know we are using the Essentials Workspace. You can access that at the top right of your screen. We're also using Smart Guides. You can view that by selecting View and selecting Smart Guides down at the bottom. Also note that at the bottom of the page, we'll be offering tips and key command recommendations for what we are teaching. Let's go. We're going to create a new document. It's going to be a letter document. Click OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select our type tool. We're going to click anywhere on the top third of our page. We're going to write the quick brown fox line break and then jumps over the moon. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of our type and we are going to change it to Arial Black. Next we'll select our first line and we'll change our type size to 34 points. Quick note about type before we continue. If you do not have your character window open as you see here or do you have access to your type over here, you can always go to Window, Type, Character. You can also select Control T. Continuing, we'll select our second line and we'll increase the type size to 20 points. One more thing about our headline, we'll select all of our type and with our character window open, we will increase the letting to 24 points. There you go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our dummy text. We'll go get that by visiting lipsum.com. We'll scroll to the bottom third of the page and we'll select the three paragraphs. Once we've got that, we'll select our three paragraphs. Copy, then into Illustrator. Once we've done that, we'll grab our selection tool and we'll deselect our headline type block. In terms of pasting our body copy in, we've got a few options here. The first option is to select our type tool, click and release anywhere on the page. We can then paste our content in. Note when we do that though, that there's no boundaries on our text. We don't have an official text block. We've just got run on type. So this isn't the best option. We'll select our selection tool, click on our type and delete. The next option we've got is we can select our type tool once again, and we can click and drag out our text block. In this case, we know we want a text block that's sized 200 points wide by 400 points tall. So we can click and drag and you'll notice with our smart guides on, we can see the actual size of our type block. Note when we do this, I'll click and release about here, that we're only approximating on our text block. So a lot of times it's not the best idea to use this. So let's scratch that. We'll click and delete that. The next way we can do it for an exact block size is we'll select our rectangle tool, click anywhere on our page, and we'll enter in our exact block dimensions. In this case, 200 points by 400 points. We'll click OK. Now we've got a black type block here. Next thing we do is we'll select our type tool. Now remember, we're already carrying text. So if we hover over to the top corner, you'll notice that we get the round dotted path around our type tool. That means that it is carrying text and ready to place. All we need to do is click. So let's do that. Once we've got that, this is just regular dummy text. We'll select it all, it's already pre-selected, and we'll paste our copy in there. Once we've done that, we'll select all of our copy, and let's change it to Times New Roman, and we'll set it to 10 points. Let's change our letting within our character window, again, Control T, to 15 points. 
Note that if we click off of it, we've created our new text box. Note that the red box with the plus sign at the bottom right of our box that indicates that there is runoff text. So with that in mind, we need to create a new column. Well, the easy way to do this is to make sure that our selection tool is selected. And then we click not once, but twice. And notice that we've got the selection tool carrying text icon. So all we need to do is go next to it, click and release. When we do that, not only does it carry the text over, but it replicates the exact size of the text box that we've created. What we can also do is we can click and drag a new text box and it will do that as well. In this case though, we don't want to do that. So once again, we'll deselect our box. We'll make sure our selection tool is selected. We'll click once, twice. We're carrying the text. We're going to go right next to it and we'll click to create a text box with the exact same dimensions as our first one. We'll deselect. Once we do that, let's start formatting our text a little bit more. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to create paragraph tabs. So we'll select our type tool. We'll start at our second paragraph and we'll delete the line break and then enter in a tab. Don't worry about it if that tab is too big, we'll fix that later. We'll jump down to our third paragraph and we'll do the same thing. We'll delete the line break and add in a tab. Once we've done that, we'll select all of our text and then we'll select our tab tool. There's two ways to do that. We can enter in shift control T to bring up our tab tool. We can also, I'll delete that. We can also select window, type and tabs as well. Once we've done that with all of our types selected, let's enter in 15 points for our first tab. We'll close the tab window now. We'll deselect our type and there you go. Next thing we want to do is we want to create an initial cap. Let's do it. The way we do that is we'll select our type tool and we'll create a type box. It doesn't matter how big it is. We just want it kind of close. So we'll drag out a type box just like that and we will enter an L. Once we've done that, we'll select our L. We'll change our type style to Arial Bold and we'll set the type size at 50 points. We'll grab our direct select tool and we'll select the bottom two anchor points of our piece. We'll click on the bottom right, then hold our shift key down to select multiple anchor points and we'll select the left one. We use our directional keys and arrow up to be as snug as possible. That's about right, right there. Next, we'll do the same thing to the right. We'll select our top right, hold our shift key down, select the bottom right and arrow to the left. That looks good right there. Let's zoom into our initial cap. We'll grab our select tool and then we'll drag it into position. That looks good right there. Next, to set a text wrap, we'll select Object, Text Wrap, and Make. Click OK. And we've got our text wrap. Notice, however, that this might not be the wrap distance that you want. The way you can fix that is we go back to Object, Text Wrap, and select Text Wrap Options. With that, we can select Preview. We'll select our offset and then increase or decrease our offset until we've got the distance we want. That looks pretty good right there. We'll select OK. And we'll select our type tool to delete our initial L. We'll grab a selection tool, click off. Might arrow this down one. I think that looks a little better. We'll click off of it again and we'll zoom out. That looks pretty good right there. Now that we've got our columns, let's bring some of these elements together. With our selection tool selected, we'll drag across both of our columns just like that. And we will arrow them up.
so that our text box is left justified along with our headline. Let's click on that. That looks pretty good right there. Let's bring our right column closer again with our selection tool selected. We'll click on our right column and we will arrow that over. If you want to get an exact distance, you can always go to outlines by selecting Control Y and you can bring your columns together, then hold your shift key and arrow to the right twice. When you hold the shift key down along with your directional keys, that moves the selected element in 10 point increments. Therefore, the right column is 20 points away from the left column. We click off it, we go, we exit outlines, and this is what we've got so far. Next thing we want to do is let's even our text columns up. The way we'll do this is we'll select our direct selection tool. And we'll click on our bottom left anchor point, hold our shift key down, and click on our bottom right. With that in mind, we'll hold our shift key, we'll arrow that to shorten up our left text column. And that looks good about right there for now. We'll grab our selection tool. And that looks pretty good. We've got one more thing we want to do, and that's let's create a pull quote. The way we'll do that is we'll select the first two sentences of our second paragraph, grabbing our type tool, of course. We'll copy that. And then let's create our text block. We'll again select our rectangle tool. We'll click anywhere along the bottom of the page and we'll create a rectangle or a square that is 200 by 200. We'll click OK. Once again, we'll grab our type tool and we'll hover over the top left corner until we get the icon for the type tool ready to place text inside. We'll click on it. We'll paste our text in. We'll select all of it again, and let's change the character to Arial Bold. Once we've done that, let's size it up to 14 points, and we will let it out to 20 points. Once that's done, again, we'll grab our direct selection tool. We'll click on the bottom two anchors of our text box. Holding our shift key, we'll arrow up. Then when we get close, we'll arrow up until our text box is minimal. There you go. Once we've got that, let's drag it over to the middle of our right column. Looks good right there. Let's set our text wrap. Again, with our selection tool and our text box selected, we're going to go object, text wrap, make. Select OK. And we've got our text wrap set. Once we click off of it, let's select our text box again and let's make our text wrap just a little bit smaller. We'll do that by selecting object, text wrap, text wrap options. We'll select preview and reduce our offset. That's good about there. We'll click OK and we'll center at about there. We'll click off. Okay, we're close now. The next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our two columns are matching in height. So we'll select our direct selection tool. We'll click on the bottom two anchor points, holding our shift key, of course, of our left box. Holding our shift key, let's arrow it down until we've got the distance how we want it. Once we've done that, we'll click off. Notice that our columns are uneven right now. We'll need to do a little work to get them even. The way we do that is we'll increase the tracking. So let's look at a decent candidate for tracking. I think if we select our second paragraph, we'll, we'll triple click on our second paragraph. One, two, three. That selects the entire paragraph. And let's increase the tracking. That increases the space between characters and words. So with that in mind, Let's keep arrowing up until we get our second line. There we go. We'll grab our selection tool, click off of our piece. Note that our columns are matching in length. 
Next thing we want to do is let's take our pull quote and put it between paragraphs. We'll select our pull quote block and arrow it down so that it lands between the paragraphs. We'll click off. Looks pretty good right there. Let's add some lines between our body copy and our text block. We will select our pen tool, click above, hold our shift key to make sure our line is perfectly horizontal. Drag it across our column, click, and we will click off of it. We'll make our fill transparent and we'll make our stroke black. Next thing we'll do is we'll increase our stroke weight to two points. Once that's done, we'll click off of it. Again, with our selection tool selected, we'll click on our path, copy and paste in front, hold our shift key down and arrow down until our line lands beneath our quote box. We'll click off of it, maybe nudge that up just one, and we are all set. Let's do one more thing. Let's change the color of our headline and pull quote. The way we do that is with our type tool selected. We'll select our headline type, we'll select all of it. We'll double click on our fill. We'll select the blue. And we'll select the color that works for us. That looks about good right there. Now before we click off of this, before we click OK, we're going to copy our color code and then click OK. We'll grab our selection tool, and then we'll grab our type tool one more time. We'll select all of our pull quote type, we'll double click on our fill color, and paste our color from the headline in there. We'll click OK. We'll click off of that, and we're close. Next thing we want to do is we'll select both of our strokes and change the stroke color to that as well. We'll click, holding our shift key down, we'll click on our bottom stroke, we'll double click on our stroke, and again, we will paste our blue into the color code. We'll click OK. We'll grab our selection tool, click off of our document, and we are just about done. Next thing we need to do is we'll select our entire document, We'll group it together. You can select Object, Group, or Control-G. Next thing we'll do is we'll center it horizontally and vertically on the page. Click off of that, and we are done. So there you have it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Beyond that, subscribe. I'd appreciate that even more. We'll see you next time. See you.